Good evening, everyone. Today is the, okay, what's the date? 23rd of November, Monday, the 23rd of November. So happy to see everybody here. We've got um, an interesting talk. Uh, what went out in all the announcements was what I'm grateful for, but we're actually going to start a deep dive into some of the topics from Essential Oils Healthcare for today. And for those of you who aren't familiar with that book, it is on super special right now and um, through Aroma Tools. And that's, I think, oh, look, somebody's actually holding up. Hey, Megan, how are you? Thank you so much. Um, uh, thanks for that little plug. We are, um, it's on super special. We're working with the leaders to try to get you some copies. If we don't do it this week because it's Thanksgiving, we're definitely going to be working on it next week. But the cool thing about it is there are 50 health issues in there. And there was a time when we had started doing some presentations. And what I've decided to do is really ramp it up and dive deeply into those 50 topics. So we've got a whole year. Now, obviously we're not gonna do it every week because some weeks we're off or some weeks we do other things, but um, I wanted to start right away and really just ramp it up and, and dive right in. Week number one is um, addictions and substance abuse, which is kind of a heavy topic, but I'm gonna keep it a little bit light because I know for Thanksgiving, nobody wants to do anything super heavy. But if you're outside of the United States, you may be thinking, you know what, I've really, it could even be that I've eaten too much or I've been in my house a long time and I've been drinking too much. This is actually a very, very real topic right now because many people who have been staying in their houses are using substances as a way of coping and I think it's important for us to recognize that and to look at the people in our surrounding area and the people that we live with and talk to and be able to kind of reach out and say, hey, there's something that you can do. Um, don't just be relying on, you know, an artificial substance to get you through this. Um, I have to say, um, on a personal note, I'm usually not a person, I'm not a drug taker, I'm not a big drinker, um, but even during COVID, you start having a glass of wine with every dinner as opposed to maybe a couple of days a week and suddenly you're feeling, wait, is this a problem for me? Or maybe you want a cocktail instead of a glass of wine. And I have to say, at least in my neck of the woods, when all of the shutdowns started, many of the businesses were closed, but liquor stores were actually deemed to be essential businesses. Businesses. I know that sounds crazy. And some of you outside of the New Jersey area must be thinking, what? That's an essential business? Yes. Liquor stores were deemed to be um, essential businesses and were actually kept open during lockdown. So if you go past any of the local businesses, and I know I have a, a couple of you on here from New Jersey. If you're from New Jersey, say hi, say hey. Um, Teresa, I see you right in my, in my screen. But if you are from New Jersey, Give me a shout out. Um, I'd love to know if I have any New Jerseyites on here. My local liquor stores are mobbed. It's really nutty. So we want to really help people. I see Christy on there. Hey, Christy, so good to see you. Raising her hand there. Brenda's from New Jersey, okay? Um, Karen's from New Jersey. So ladies, you know, right? Do you have a liquor store near you? It's crazy town. I go by my liquor store my actually my liquor store and my pharmacy are right next door to each other and a lot of times I have to go there to pick up things from my, at the pharmacy to pick up things for my mom um, who you know is now in assisted living and when I go by there you can't even get a parking spot because between the pharmacy and the liquor store it's insanity it's really just insanity so the other thing that I want to talk about today is woohoo bogo box who got a bogo box from the u.s or who ordered a bogo box and if you didn't get a bogo box please don't feel jealous there are some cool things in there but you're gonna really i think you're gonna feel good about it let me know if you got a bell robot derek says me that's cool derek i'm so glad you got a bogo box brenda says she received her bogo box if you're outside of the united states and you ordered one but you didn't get it want to know that too um, Sihan says, yes, I ordered. I think you're going to love it. It's, it should be coming. EK says, me, still waiting for the delivery. Lynette says, yes, still waiting for the shipment. I have to tell you, I am shocked that I got mine so fast because my Christmas stuff came so late. Everybody was online and saying, I got my Christmas stuff and I got nothing. And then all of a sudden it all came in one big fell swoop. I'm actually looking at my Christmas stuff right there. 
Um, I have not tried the hot chocolate yet. Who's had the hot chocolate? Anybody? Megan is raising her hand. Anybody else? You tell me you got the hot chocolate and you tried it. Let me know. I'd love to hear. Um, Lynette is saying uh, yes to waiting for the shipment. Pushpa says I missed it all, especially the deep blue. Pushpa, I'm so sorry. Um, Megan says, no, I didn't get. Z says, me, and Megan says, yummy. Um, Z says, cinnamon taste, I like it. And Brenda says, I received mine on Thursday during BOGO week. Okay, so keep keep looking at the chats, everybody, because everybody's chatting about what they got or they didn't get, which is really cool. So keep letting me know in the, BOGO, in the chat, did you get your BOGO box? Did you like your BOGO box? Have you ordered any of the Christmas products? Do you like the Christmas products? Did you get the Christmas products? Tell me what's going on, but I also want to um, launch into our presentation for today. We've got two brand new um, products and they are, as far as I can see, limited editions. I don't know if we're going to get them in the future, but I wanted to talk to you a little bit about them um, because I think that they're, they're gonna be maybe something that we're getting in the in the future in the US. I think we're gonna get Air X. I know that's a product that's been available overseas for a long time. If you know, um, I think it's called, help me anybody who's on, on from uh, Southeast Asia, what is Air X called outside of the US? It has a different name. A um, couple people hopping on and saying they love the lemon lime drops, which is also really cool. Okay, so we are, oh, it's called Clearify. Thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, I, I remember getting a bottle of Clearify when I was in, um, I must have been in Singapore, maybe in Malaysia, but um, I don't, I have to be honest, I don't remember what it smelled like at all. So um, when I opened it, it was really kind of a surprise to me. I expected that it was going to smell exactly like Breathe, but it does not really smell like Breathe. So that's sort of interesting. Okay, so let me get started. I want to share my screen with you. And then um, I'll tell you about all the other craziness that's gone on here over the last week or so. I mean, it has been quite a week. Um, I hope you've all had a good week. And if you have had a good week, please let me know because I'd love to hear more about what you're doing and what's going on. Here we go. Okay, here we go. So addiction and substance abuse. So sounds a little heavy, don't wanna make it too heavy, but I do wanna make sure that you are, um, you're able to talk to your friends and family members about this. I think it's an important topic. I want to, um, I'm trying to get the, the reason I'm, I'm going back and forth is because there we go, I got the participants. So I have to keep the participants open because we're still on this crazy thing where I have to admit everybody individually, even though we have a, um, even though we have a, um, a, 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 a um, passcode, even though we have one. I don't know, I, I have to reset it, it's my fault, I know. Okay, let's talk about addiction and substance abuse. This week, crazy for a couple of different reasons. I'm actually very happy that I got my Airex, my peppermint, and I think, did I get a breathe in here? I think I got a breathe. I know I got a Siberian fur. Yes, I got a breathe roll on, which I'm gonna be using a lot. Um, part of the reason why I'm happy that I got all those breathing problem products is that we started doing some crazy work on our house and it has been so dusty and noisy in my house, but specifically really dusty, like dust this thick on everything. And um, we're going to keep doing this all the way through the holidays. My husband and I, I don't know, got this really crazy idea that it wouldn't be so bad because who was coming this year anyway, because we weren't having any parties, but we never realized how crazy it was actually going to be. We had, a, we moved bedrooms, we all showering in one bathroom that's in the basement. It's, it's interesting. So if I look a little spruced up today, it's because this is the only jacket that I could find. Anyway, um, the other thing that happened that was actually pretty crazy was that um, my son called me uh, Saturday night and said, mom, I'm not feeling well and I'm on my way to the infirmary. And when he got to the infirmary, the infirmary was closed. So I'll tell you the rest of that story in a minute. Um, 
Oh, Teresa's saying, I think that if you had a co-host, they could keep track of the people popping on and let them in while you were presenting. Maybe Sihan could do this. Oh, I don't know how to set up a co-host, but I will do that. Can I? Let's see. Make, make host. Uh, can I do that? If I make Sihan the host, will I be able to continue to control the slides? That's the issue. Teresa, tell me. <laughs> oh, this is so crazy. Okay, anyone who can help me, I'm willing to take suggestions. Okay, here we go. And of course, this is all being recorded. So this is gonna be on uh, YouTube and you're gonna see Elena in all her craziness. So let me just keep changing slides so at least we can keep going. So first of all, what is addiction, right? Addiction is a physical or a psychological dependence on something over which you feel that you have no control. Many substances um, can cross the blood brain barrier, altering the current, uh, chemical environment of the brain. And so that's kind of the definition, the strict definition of what is an addiction. But an addiction can be anything. It's something that we do repetitively and we wish or we desire not to do that thing anymore. So it could be anything from um, yeah, eating too much to taking artificial substances. It could even be things like gambling or shopping that are ne not necessarily being ingested by us, but that we feel powerless over doing that thing. And we we continuously do it when it gives us some sort of a, a rise, right? The other thing is we are, many of us would consider some of the things that we do on our phone in addiction. And so if we try, we're trying to break some of those things, it's important for us to work through it and to find methods. Essential oils are a wonderful way for you to break some of these bonds. Um, just click the name of participant you want to make the co-host. Okay, I'm gonna do it now. It says I can change, if I click their name, I get a co -ho I get, they can change the host but I don't get co-host. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, I'm trying. Okay, anyway, I'll keep going. Um, our approach. So what's the approach? I'm going to share four different approaches for using essential oils to help you with addictions or for help you kind of lead somebody else through addictions. Any method that feels good for you, that's going to help another person. If we're being in service to others, especially when we use our essential oils or we share our essential oils, I think that's a really important place that we want to be in. And even if we help someone to get to the next level, we may not help them completely get rid of that addiction, but to begin to feel powerful, more powerful in light of whatever that substance or that action is, repetitive action, and help them to seek to find new ways to um, um, to act uh, more responsibly when they're in, they're in a situation where they are tempted. You can use all of the suggestions that I have for you. You can use some of them um, and you can play around what's the best thing for you or for your friend or for your family member. Okay, so first, first up, we want to talk about applying. Applying is very effective because we're applying directly to the skin. It is being absorbed um, uh, through into the bloodstream quickly. You have your choice. You can actually apply um, either one of these oils with fractionated coconut oil, so cilantro or juniper berry, terrific, blended together. They actually smell very nice. I know some of you don't love cilantro. If you don't love cilantro, um, I would maybe um, substitute um, bergamot in this particular um, mixture, but cilantro really is the most effective. You could add fractionated coconut oil so that it would stay on the skin longer and be absorbed over a longer period of time. Also makes it more convenient for you. If you're putting together a roll on, with these two oils in it, I would use um, equal drops. So if you were using a 10 milliliter roll-on, I would use 10 drops of each, and then I would fill the roller bottle up with fractionated coconut oil. If you're using undiluted, uh, you wanna apply two to four drops of, of the two of them, undiluted over the liver and on the bottom of the feet two times a day. Drink plenty of water when you're doing this, you wanna be able to flush the toxins from your body. So it's important that you're applying over the liver, even if you're using the roll-on method, for convenience. You may not want to smell strongly of cilantro and juniper just because of your personal 
preferences. You can blend other oils in there, but these are my, my top two picks. Um, okay, so everybody, I, I, I see all your messages. You are amazing. You're always trying to help me and I love that. This is such, this is such a great group, I swear. Um, I shouldn't swear, but it's the truth. You're just amazing, all of you. Okay, so now this is my other um, other recommendation. When we talk about try, we're talking about ingesting it, right? So we wanna talk about the three things that we can ingest, which are um, clove, terrazyme, and black pepper. So um, I would be putting these in a capsule. You wanna try, you other, you also can be putting them under the tongue. So you could try a drop of clove and a drop of pep, drop of pepper on the tip of the tongue, especially it's kind of that, let's call it shock value, if you will, um, right on the tip of the tongue, every time a craving occurs, if you really need to break a craving. However, you can also be using these in a perfume or in a roll-on. Um, peppermint, in addition, I just wanna mention, um, has been known to reduce fruit addictions when used frequently throughout the day. One drop, you can use your peppermint beadlets very fre uh, frequently. Um, adding Digest Zen and Terrazyme um, can also help increase the absorption of nutrients that may be lacking in anyone who's suffering from addictions. What we find sometimes is people are, especially when we talk about food addictions, we can talk about repetitive behaviors, eating foods that perhaps are less nutritious and winding up with um, a nutrition, a nutrient imbalance. So when we're talking specifically about food addictions, we wanna make sure that the person is getting the nutrition that they need, might not be the case. When we're talking about other sorts of addictions, it may not be a, um, a nutrient imbalance per se, but if the, the, the uh, action is repetitive enough, it can actually cause the person to block out other more positive behaviors. For example, we all know people who smoke or jewel. Are they spending a lot of time doing this and not doing other things? Smoking also tends to reduce our natural craving or desire for food. So are these people perhaps eating very low quality or low nutrient foods and also damaging their body in that way, damaging their lungs and also damaging their body in that they're not taking in the nutrients that they need. Um, um, you are going to need in general to improve your nutrition to help you overcome uh, an addiction. I would never say to someone, oh no, uh, your nutrition is fine even though, you have a new, uh, even though you have an addiction. My expectation is if someone has a severe addiction or something that they're really trying to combat, there is some sort of a nutritional imbalance there. Okay. My next uh, recommendation is cleansing, specifically with addictions. We wanna make sure that you are getting any of the toxins. Um, and it could be just that emotional imbalance or that chemical imbalance that's causing you to continuously seek out this um, thing or this behavior. My top recommendations for cleansing, number one are the digest, uh, blend, digest Zen blend soft gels. Um, uh, cleansing is sort of the core to addiction cessa cessation. You want to start perhaps with your GX Assist. That's your cleansing formula. You're using it for 10 days. Many of you have done these cleanses already. Um, then incorporate your Zendocrine Detoxification Complex for 30 days. Your your, you can be using, now it's interesting, in this particular um, instance, we've shown the Zendocrine, what we call the Zendocrine Black because it's got the black bottle. I often recommend the Zendocrine White, which is the one that's used in the cleanse. The cleanse. This is more of a support supplement and can be used on a daily basis. I prefer the white for the cleansing. Um, remember, cleansing is an ongoing process and should be continued on a regular basis. So you want to periodically cleanse your body. And then you're using your Digest Zen to support your um, healthy digestion, making sure that you're getting your nutrients that you need from your, um, from your foods. Um, this is kind of a one, two, three, four punch, if you will. So you've got your um, apply, you've got your try. And then in this particular case, 
we've got your cleansing and we've got diffusing. And I think all of those are going to help you or help you to help someone else. You may be living with someone who's struggling with an addiction. You may be living with someone who um, has difficulty resisting certain things that they would like to. Could you help them in any way? If you're they're living in your household, it may be as simple as um, having a certain type of diffuser blend running on a regular basis. Um, I'm not saying that it's going to completely just just a diffuser blend is going to help them completely eliminate a, a, an addiction, a long-term addiction, but it can help reduce those anxious feelings. Many people who suffer from addictions experience very anxious feelings um, when they're in the in the throes, if you will, of the addiction. So I'm going to, on a pers very personal level, I actually erased a lot of my um, phone apps. And I think I mentioned this over the last uh, few months, for a few weeks. And part of the reason why was I was always feeling tense. I had this kind of underlying tension, kind of stress. I didn't know if it was in my neck. Um, I couldn't put my phone down. I would put it in another room and then I would try to almost resist the phone. And what I realized was, was some of, some of it had to do with the apps that I was getting on an app and then not being able to get off the app. It was almost like an addiction. If you've seen the movie, um, The Social Dilemma, which is a fairly recent movie that's on Netflix, if you're a Netflix subscriber, it talks about artificial intelligence and it talks about specifically how many apps, specifically our social media apps, are designed to really increase our dopamine, that feeling of happiness or uh, satisfaction every time we're on the app. The other thing is because these apps are run by very sophisticated computer programs, they begin to show us more of what we click on. So for example, if I were to click on, I don't know, earrings or jackets, I would begin to see more of those things. But if I begin to click on things that perhaps are socially disturbing or even um, socially controversial, things like um, election results or people that are protesting, I'll begin to see more of those types of items what starts to happen? Our worldview becomes skewed because we begin to think, oh, well, everybody's looking at this. This is normal. These are the things that everybody sees. Again, fueling those feelings of compulsion or addiction. So for me, I went the extra step of erasing the apps. Now, when I need to get on an app, I go onto my laptop, which just makes, I have an additional step that I have to take. Makes it a little bit harder, but it, it's, it's calming me down. I'm a much calmer person. I didn't want to be that, that tense, overwrought person. I didn't, I didn't feel like myself. And then what, what also begins to happen? When we don't feel like ourselves, then we seek out methods for calming and soothing. And so for me, calming and soothing always meant either diffusing or applying some oils. And even those things really weren't um, helping me to achieve that, that sense of relaxation. So for me, an acute, I was feeling acutely tense and um, dissatisfied and um, nervous. Part of that had to do, I'm sure, with the lead up to the election, the US elections, super contentious in the lead up, still fairly contentious. We, you know, we're, we're working through it as a nation. However, I feel a lot more calm now that I'm able to selectively see um, certain inputs online. It's, it's, it's been a sea change for me. Okay, so let's talk about diffusing now. Diffusing peppermint or elevation to change the chemical environment of your brain so you can relax and resist can be a, a very, um, an, an easy way for you to um, begin to feel a little bit better about yourself. I'd also like to suggest that you diffuse a couple of different things that are in your brand new Bogo box. So for example, you definitely can be diffusing your, um, oops, I took them out and now I put them back. Um, you can definitely be uh, diffusing your adaptive, which just came in your, in your Bogo box. The other thing that I would suggest is your Siberian fur, terrific for your, um, your breathing, your airways, also very grounding. Siberian fur can be one of those essential oils that helps you to just really inhale deeply and exhale and relax. It's that, it's that sense of um, being in a, in, a tr in a forest. And then the other one that I don't know that we're going to get it uh, as a permanent 
on a permanent basis, but if you got your BOGO box, your Northern Escape. So those are my three recommendations for adding to your diffuser rotation if this is something that you're looking, um, if you're really looking to achieve. Um, according to research from 2008 in Contemporary Nurse, the inhalation of essential oils acts on the central nervous system by decreasing sympathetic nervous system activity and arousal of the autonomic nervous system, which can help to ease the tension associated with trying to end an addiction. So even trying to end an addiction can cause us to be more nervous. So we want to try to combat that as much as as, as humanly possible. So let me talk a little bit about what happened. Um, yeah, can't find the, can't find the co-host. I can't find it either, uh, Shin. Um, but thank you. Thank you for continuing to get on. I know everybody's working to find this co-host option. I think what I'm probably going to have to do is when I get on in the beginning is set the co-host. I'm going to see if I can do that. Um, last but not least, actually, I've got a few more slides for you, but I did want to mention um, what happens when we have periodic tension that causes us to go back to that thing or to seek out that thing that we used for self-soothing? So that's a tricky one. Okay, we used to have an addiction. We've given up the thing. We've put it down. We feel like we've conquered it, right? But now we're under some sort of stress and now we've, we're, we're feeling a little bit lost. What do we do so that we can resist picking up that addictive thing all over again, right? It's really, really important. Um, we know that addiction and depression can often go hand in hand. If you suffer from depression, in addition to addiction, your struggle may be harder. Dealing with depression can unlock the strength you need to overcome your addictions. Depression medications can often worsen addictions. You want to try some of these. We're going to give you a 90-day plan at the end. Um, specifically for addiction, but you can look in the book for the 90 day plan for depression and see if that can also help to support you. Um, I don't know if you know, but habits are more powerful than we realize. We often act out of what we used to do, what we know or what we've done in the past, instead of making better choices for ourselves. Often detrimental behaviors can be modified by focusing on changing patterns and forming new neural pathways. One of the best things, and that, that's why I put the little brain at the bottom, um, that we can do is exercise. So strenuous exercise, and there's a recent study actually that shows that if you can do 30 minutes a day, um, including 10 minutes, or I'm sorry, um, two minutes of flat out sprinting can actually begin to build some of these neural pathways. So if you look at this picture, you can see there are all those little spidery webs. When we don't exercise and we do have an addiction, those spidery webs actually begin to shrink. Those are um, sort of our, our tentacles, if you will, the, the furthest out of, and those are how we make our connections in our brain. However, this those sprints help these to grow back. And what they've seen is they actually grow back very, very quickly and um, can help us to, to really make new neural pathways. So use exercise, whether you're feeling in, um, addictive feelings or you're feeling um, depressed or un, unhappy feelings, it really can be. And it seems like, oh yeah, use some exercise, but many doctors and many psychiatrists and psychologists are using exercise as a prescription for their patients. Even, a, even three times a week can really help you to kind of not only break the addiction, but to begin to change the neural pathways, which is the thing that, that's so important. Um, a couple of other resources I just wanted to mention to you. Um, we've got three books that you may, um, uh, let me see if I can copy this. Oops. Yep. I'm gonna add it into our chat. Oops, where am I? Nope, I'm not moving it into our chat now. I'll put it in our chat later. We've got some books here, um, Making Habits, Breaking Habits, Why We Do the Things, we, Why We Don't, and How to Make Change Stick. And my personal favorite, The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg, which has been out for a while, but one of those really um, terrific classic books. It was a New York Times bestseller for many years. Um, I use the app sometimes, get, get some headspace. 
or just Headspace. The book was called Get Some Headspace, but Headspace is that app where you can kind of calm down, meditate, and really center yourself. If you don't happen to be a, a prayer meditation um, without a necessarily a religious, uh, within a religious context can be the next best thing. Okay. Um, Phil McGraw, many of you may know him because he's a, an American kind of self-help, if you will, guru says, remember, you don't ever break a habit. You want to get rid of a ba of bad behavior. You have to replace it with something positive, something that will make you stronger instead of weaker. Work on identifying positive behaviors that would make good replacements for your addiction. And that's where exercise comes in. Um, we can begin to choose better things each time we're faced with an addiction. And that's what I started to think about before. So um, I, at the very beginning of this presentation, I started telling you about my son, that he was going over to the... Um, the health center, when he got to the health center is actually closed. So he went over to a, what he thought was a medical clinic, which turned out more or less to be an ER and walked in and he called me from there and was like, hey mom, I'm here. You're gonna give me some tests. And I said, what do you feel? And he said, shortness of breath. And I thought, oh no. Um, they wound up doing all sorts of COVID tests and pneumonia and flu, um, strep, mono, none of which he has, um, but he does have bronchitis. So they put him on a couple of um, different medications. You know, mom wasn't there. He's 19. Um, I think he made the right decision to, to get some medical help. I kind of wish that he had called me in advance and said maybe two or three days ago and said, I'm beginning to feel this. What do you think I should do? He's got a first aid kit. He's got a ton of essential oils down in college, but first time feeling sick at university. As you know, he's a first semester, um, first semester student at uh, uni. I guess he did okay. I talked to him uh, last night. I'm trying to talk to him twice a day to just see what's going on. And um, he's supposed to be getting on a plane on Tuesday. Yes, tomorrow, tomorrow uh, around midnight, he's supposed to be getting on a plane. So for those of you who are prayers, please keep him in your prayers that he gets on that plane and he gets home and that he's not contagious. He does not have a fever and he's not coughing anymore, but man, super scary. Um, so that was one of those uh, moments where I guess if I had had an addiction, I probably would have gone to it immediately just to try to help myself calm down. But I just kind of sat peacefully. I started praying. I called a friend right away and said, okay, this is what happened. What do I do? And, and luckily her son is a little bit older. And she said, you know what? Sometimes this happens, you know, they, they're not sure exactly what to do. And so they do the best that they can. So we will see what happens to him and let's let's pray he gets home tomorrow. That's our, because it's gonna be very tricky. Many of you um, may know my son is about 2000 miles away, more or less um, down in Texas. And so if he doesn't get on that plane or he can't get on that plane, it may mean that either mom or dad are driving down to pick him up or figuring out some other way. Cause as you know, uh, air travel now is very restricted. So let's see folks, this is gonna be, a, it's going to be a very interesting Thanksgiving between the construction and uh, my son coming home, keeping our fingers crossed. Okay, so what's our 90 day plan? Month one, we want to help you to get the black pepper, the cilantro, the peppermint, the GX assist, the peppermint and the zendocrine blend because you're going to start your cleansing right away. You're going to make your roll on for yourself and you are going to um, begin to use some of those products, begin to diffuse right in your environment. Second month, I'm actually going to recommend the emotions kit because if you're feeling emotional about anything that's going on, you really wanna make sure that you have some of those support methods. You can use the emotions kit, you can get the adaptive kit, but that would be my, my choice for you in your second month. And in your third month, I would be adding digest and essential oil, peppermint and on guard beadlets and digest and soft gels because you're going to need those for ongoing support for your digestive system. From your BOGO box, what are you going to be using? You're going to be using copaiba under your tongue and you're adaptive when you're feeling overwhelmed. So those are my tips for you. That's your, your uh, cheat sheet, if you will, your, your 90 day plan. If you um, have any questions about those, I'm going to be taking some questions in the, in the, in the, the chats. I'm going to show you some pictures of month one. Here we go. 
Um, that's your num month one. You can take a shot of that if you want to. Here is your month two, if you wanna take a picture of this. If not, you can watch the uh, replay and get a, sh a shot of that. Um, thank you, Lydia and Brenda. Um, um, nervous mom here, right? I, I have to say in general, I tend not to be nervous, but this was one of those cases where I just thought, oh yeah, yeah, what, what is going on here? So here's month two, and then here is month three. So I have um, a blend for you, which actually adds a couple of other things. This is what I'm calling an addiction soother. You're gonna add lavender, your black pepper, marjoram, some sandalwood and some ylang ylang. And if I'm not mistaken, you actually have a lang lang. Yes, you do in your bogo box. So if you got your lang lang, you can use that from your bogo box too. So we kind of tied both things in together, right? We talked about addiction, substance abuse, right? And we also talked about your bogo box. I think you, I hope you got some great tips today. If you are, um, um, experience any sort of breathing issues as a result of your, um, as a result of your addiction, you're using your Airex, of course, and your Breathe Roll-On. So I've basically gone through everything. You've got two additional oils in there. You can be using your On Guard and your Oregano on a regular basis to support your immune system and also to continue your, your good health. I'm a big proponent of On Guard. I use it all the time for everything. Um, I would say hands down, it is my favorite oil. I love the way it smells. I love the way it works. Um, I just use it, use it, use it all the time. So that's it's one of my personal favorites. Um, Richard, thank you so much um, for your prayers. I really appreciate it. Um, we'll see. I'll, I'll give you an update next Monday. I'm going to see you all next Monday. Um, as always, thank you to our Presidential Diamond team, everybody who gets on here every week. And um, I hope you liked the new format. Let me know in the chat if you like the new format, talking more in depth about certain um, physical issues. We've kind of gone up and down a little bit for the last few weeks. We've had a lot of things going on. We've talked about Christmas products. We've talked about all different sorts of things, but I think it's time to kind of dive back in again. Next week, we're gonna be talking obviously about the um, products of the month and our specials. We always talk about our specials, but I think we're also going to be talking about one of our second issues, um, uh, which should be, uh, I don't know what the second issue is. I'll let you know, but you will see it and we'll make sure that whatever goes out in the chat is more accurate. Here's the book that we've been talking about from today, Essential Oils Healthcare for Today, um, A Beginner's Guide. And as I mentioned to you before, it is on super special at aromatools.com. Um, if you want to follow on Instagram or on um, any other of our channels, find this uh, uh, replay on YouTube. If you're listening on YouTube for the first time, excuse me for all the fits and starts. We kind of had a little, as you can see, trying to figure out what the co-host was, trying to figure out what the presentation was. You heard a lot about what's going on with me and my family and so on, but I hope you've enjoyed. I hope you've enjoyed the presentation overall. Remember, you are amazing. I'm so happy that it's Thanksgiving week. Um, I'm actually cooking for the first time soup to nuts, all on my own. Well, not all on my own because my daughter's going to help me, right? Um, for the first time in, I don't even know how many years, I basically have been either ordering catering or going to someone's house for like years and years. I, I can't even tell you. I can remember distinctly preparing a Thanksgiving meal by myself when I was single in my little apartment. And I also, I can remember doing one when I was first married. I wanna say thank you to everybody who, who's been here um, through all the vagaries of what we did today. I hope you enjoyed the presentation and that you are, um, there we go and that you feel like you got something out of it today. We are been a little bit all over, all over the place. Everybody's saying happy Thanksgiving, share recipes. Um, let's see what we can do. I'm gonna try and share some recipes. If I make, especially if I make something with um, essential oils and it comes out really good, we're gonna be um, testing out a few things. I have this funky recipe, funky new recipe for a turkey that you actually use a, um, um, a pizza stone. You don't put the turkey directly on the pizza stone. We put the pizza stone in the oven 
and then you put the turkey in a pan and then you put the pan on top of the pizza stone. And it says that the, because you know how American turkeys are huge. They can be as much as 20 pounds, mine is 16 pounds. And it says that the dark meat will cook faster and the white meat will stay moist. And so let's hope that that happens. I read it in a reputable place. So I'm gonna try it out. I'll let you know if it's good or not good. Um, yes, I'll let you know if we have any. Yeah, right, Brenda, it sounds interesting, right? We'll see if it works. Um, I wanna type your, I wanna send everybody if I can, whoops. There we go. I was able to send to you all of the book recommendations that I had from before. So there's your um, making habit, making habits, breaking habits, why we don't, and the power of habit. That's my personal favorite that I read actually quite a while ago, but it is really, it's worth reading or listening to. Um, um, thank you, Narinda. Narinda saying thank you for, thank you for um, hard to get turkey. Yeah, hard to get turkey in, in Singapore, Malaysia. It's not something people eat outside of the United States. It's like a goofy American thing, right? I don't know why we chose turkey. I actually I do know why we chose turkey because they're plentiful here. But even if you go to Europe, people are like, ooh, turkey. No, we don't eat that. It's just considered dry and uninteresting. Right? <laughs> but we eat it with plenty of gravy for all of my American friends, right? We just pour the gravy on top so that it's, it's, uh, it stays moist. Okay, so I am giving something away today. Hold on one second. I want to give you something fun. Um, actually, I have to say farewell first to all of the people that are on our um, are on our YouTube. I'm going to say goodbye to you for now, and I'm going to stop the share. If you are listening on YouTube, thank you for all for being so patient today. Please click click the subscribe button below and click the bell so that you can get notifications and we'll see you back here again next week.